Hello, so as you can see I've got something very special now. I've actually managed to get an Avon M50 and not for a stupid amount of money. It was about £60. Because um, I don't really want to spend, you know, over 100 on one of these. But here we go. I've got an Avon M50, so let's talk about it. So, this is an Avon M50. Now you might be saying, this looks familiar, why is that? Well, because, you know that Master GSR I don't like? This was the mask that was meant to be the GSR in British Army service. It won the weapons trials and then they said, oh well, but the GSR is cheaper so we'll buy that mask instead. So this, from what I understand of it, in all accounts and purposes, is better than the GSR. However, what I'm going to do in a future video, not today's video, is do a, like a direct side-by-side -side comparison where we go over the weights of all the bits, fields of view, um, you know, how comfortable they are and things like that. But for this video we're just going to be purely taking a look at the um, Avon M50. So, what's the M50 then? Basically, if you go back, I think it was to some point in the 90s or early 2000s, the US um, did like a weapons trial with gas masks or respirators or protective masks as they called them. And what this trial was basically about was to see, um, could they get a futuristic mask? Um, and there was a list of features they wanted. Uh, this was the mask that won the trial, uh, the Avon M50. Um, an interesting note about these masks is basically, um, although Avon is a British company, they do have a factory in the US, because a lot of Americans have said to me, how come my Avon mask is made in the US? It's because Avon has a US factory as well as a UK one now. I think that was part of the agreement of winning a weapons trial type thing, is that you would actually employ Americans to make some of this stuff. So, in, this mask is very, very similar to the GSR, um, you know, in all accounts and purposes. If you're familiar with the GSR, you'll be familiar with this. However, the main difference seems to be the build quality of this is much higher. Um, it certainly weighs less. You can see that the uh, side loading filters are much smaller. Anyway, let's get one of these filters off and we'll take a look at it first. So, these are a bit awkward to get off because, um, I guess they're designed so they don't come off easily and accidentally kill you. So, um, let's get one of these off. And I'm going to assume as well, this filter is going to stop you breathing when the filter's actually off, um, like with the uh, other mask. So, this is the filter, as you can see, quite compact. Um, I believe this blue thing here is meant to indicate if the filter's still got life in it, which is actually quite interesting. But I'm not 100% sure of that, but I know some Avon filters do that now where they have a colour changing thing. If it's blue, uh, I don't know if it's blue meaning the filter's still useful, blue means it's expired, I have no idea. Um, there's some writing on here, canister chemical biological mask M61, interesting enough, even though it's obviously an M50. Lot number Avon, blah 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 blah, so there's a serial number on there. Um, so, an interesting thing to try will be to find out, you know, will the mask function, can you breathe with that, or does that seal off that side? Um, that will be an interesting thing to see, so let's see that now. Um, I'll just say, mention quickly, the strap system's a bit weird, so, bottom two straps are quick adjust straps, uh, middle two straps are those kind of ones like the CT12 has, where you set them to a position and it stays there. Top two straps these weird Velcro things, which doesn't make any sense to me, but hey ho. So let's get the mask on. So once you've got the mask on, you're, I think you're meant to like with the GSR pull down on this bit to get your chin fully into it. So there we go, that's that bit pulled down. Now let's tighten it. Hmm. Okay, so phone has been answered and mask is back on. So how's that blocked off that side? I don't know if it has or not. Let's take this other filter off and see if I start to suffocate. So now no, it seems unlike the GSR, the Avon M50 doesn't actually lock off the air things, which I thought it did, unless there's another way of doing that, I don't know. But that's interesting, because from everything I'd heard, this is exactly the same as the GSR. But apparently, no, taking the filter off doesn't block them off on this mask. And this is, as I said, some sort of switch I don't know about, but it's definitely the M50's filter system. But I don't know if this would actually have any improvement over 40mm NATO, to be quite honest, if your filters, um, you know, don't seal off the thing when you take them off. I suppose you could argue the valve system is better, but I don't know. That's still let me breathe through, is it? I figured it out. So, okay, there is a way somehow with these valves that you can push them in a certain way and then they seal off the side so let's see if I can figure out how that works mm. 
Okay, so it seems on these suction cups, or like umbrella valves, whatever they are, that um, if they're in this position, you can breathe through. Um, so I'm guessing when the filter's pushed on, <clears throat> this bit pushes them into that position so they open. So maybe there's a way that when you take these filters off, they seal. But if they're like this, you can't breathe. So the mask does have that system. So let's open them back up again and put the filters on. I don't know if they have to go around a particular way. Right, I guess that one's on properly. <clears throat> now let's do this other one. So... I've put that around the wrong way. It's a bit like the GSR, I think you can put the filters back to front. Okay, so they're on. And it seems to have pressurised, so I guess the mask's tight onto my head. Let me just get this strap fully done up. Right, wonderful. So, how is it in terms of comfort? Well, this mask is actually in a small. Um, because you can see there, this one actually says S, M and L on it, rather than actually being, um, you know, like 1, 2, 3 in a backwards number system that Avon like to use. So, how does it feel in that regard? Well, I'm pleased to tell you that the small doesn't feel too uncomfortable on me. Um, I bought a small one because the small one um, was on an auction starting at £50, the medium was on an auction starting at £100. So I bid on the small one and I won it. So, um, that's the good news. The, um... This one, you know, actually fits me all right, it seems. Even if I probably could have done the medium, because again, it's the issue I have with some of these masks are on the bridge of my nose. You know, it feels a bit crushing. And I don't have a particularly big nose either. Um, so, there's that. But otherwise, it's very comfortable. Um, <clears throat> very similar rubber to the FM12 or CT12. Um, Good field of view. You'll notice this is nowhere near as big as the GSR's um, view, uh, sort of panoramic lens, but it sits much closer to your eyes, which is how you want to do it when you have a panoramic lens. Now, if we look around the edges there, does that all seem well made? Um, it looks like it is. It's not got that weird rubber bubbling like the um, GSR has, so that's good. There's a drinking tube system, but there's no drinking tube actually inside the mask. The seller had said that. I assume when it was taken out of military service, that was pulled out. Again, you could find a replacement part and put it back in. But the drinking tube thing works like most other Avon masks. It has the Avon bottle connector. So you should be able to attach it to an Osprey canteen or whatever like that. So let's put that back on and just see if I can get that back into position. Not sure if I've quite done that right. But there we go. Anyway, it's out of my way. So let's actually see if these filters work because I've got a bit of a problem with this mask. If the filters on it don't work, um, I probably can't replace them because of how hard it is to find these masks on the surplus market. So let's see if it works. That side works. All right, good news, the filters still seem to be working. And why I wouldn't actually use this as a CBRN mask if I had out-of-date filters on it like these are. At least it works for the banana oil test, so the mask is perfectly usable for any practical reasons I might want it for. So, I'm going to do a couple of quick tests now. I want to do one where I look down a rifle. You've all seen that one before, but I want to see can you get a cheek weld or whatever on the rifle, even with these bulky filters on. Uh, I also want to try and use binoculars with it, because will it work with optics? That's another thing, because remember the GSR can't do either of those things very well. Um, but you can probably tell already, and you can accuse me of being an Avon fanboy as much as you want, that this mask actually seems to, um, for all accounts and purposes, um, you know, be a much better mask than a GSR, but that's not really any surprise. Now. This mask might actually be coming into British Army service to replace the GSR, but the MOD hasn't confirmed the new mask yet. All they've said is they've paid Avon, you know, a couple of hundred million to supply a new mask to the British Army. I'd assume they'd want this because this is the mask they originally wanted, um, that the GSR, you know, was instead used because it was cheap. Now, I just want to see if I can work out how we were meant to take these off and keep that section sealed. Now, is that suction cup in the correct position? No. So, 
So I have really no idea how you're meant to take these off. Do you have to push them in before you take them off? I don't know. Because obviously pushing it in opens that barrel, doesn't it? Um, Like with the GSR, it's actually pretty awkward doing these filters. I mean, obviously with practice you can do it, but I still prefer the good old 40mm myself. Now, whether or not I've got that one properly, I don't know. It's not clicked or anything, so, <clears throat> so I guess I haven't. There we go, that's obviously on properly. Let's try again. So, let's try and take this filter off without pushing it in at all, see if that does anything. Now is that valve open or closed? Um, no, it was open. I, I don't get the system to be honest. Um, the good thing I will say of this system is let's just put one filter on. Again, it's difficult because, you know, I like good old 40 millimeters myself, as I said. All right, let's get that back into position, there we go. Okay, so let's take one of these filters off and make sure it's sealed. Right, there we go. So that's sealed. Can't breathe through that side. You get much better airflow on this mask than the GSR, so that is a good thing. With one filter, even though it's smaller, you get better airflow. So it's not like the GSR where I, I find that with one filter on you get too restricted airflow. With two filters on the airflow is fine, but it's really bulky and awkward. Um, I wonder, can you put these filters in the reverse position and will they seal on? I don't know, let's try and find out. Probably not, I'd say. Now, I'm assuming these filters have to go on the same way as, um, like, you know, they, they were at the beginning, like, facing that way. Right, I don't know if I've got this one on properly. I think it's on properly anyway. Anyway, let's do a rifle and binocular test. Okay, let's see if with an antiquated rifle I can look down it properly. Oh, I can get an iron sight picture, look at that. The filter doesn't interfere with the cheek weld because it goes under your cheek. It's still not as good as I'd like, but you can actually get a cheek weld and look down a rifle scope. Apparently what people said to me you had to do with the GSR in British Army training for a good sight picture is actually to put the rifle in your ch on your chest or something and do this with it. Um, apparently it's because the sights sit higher. Um, but still, it's like, if you're going to have to go to that length to um, look down a rifle sight, there's something very wrong. Now let's just take one side filter off and see what it's like aiming with only one filter. Obviously I'll close this valve, so... It simulates uh, not, you know, dying of a gas attack that way. Yeah, much easier now to get a cheek weld. I said it could be done before, so that definitely works on it. Let's have another practice and see if I can get this back into position. Ah, wrong way. There we go, that's back on. <clears throat> but yeah, the point is that with the uh, SLR, you know, I can get a cheek weld on this and look down the sights. I have to camp my head in the rifle a little bit, but it's not to the level you have to do it with the GSR. So that's a good sign. So now let's see what happens with binoculars. Right, binoculars. So can I look through these with this mask? And the answer is yes. Not as good as with a Soviet optical mask, of course, but the point is I can still put these onto my eyes, like where my eyes should be anyway, and actually look down them. Yeah, so you can actually use optics as masks. Obviously not as well as something like an SHMS, a proper optical mask, but binoculars do actually work with this because um, you can get them into a position on the panoramic lens where they fit. Now, 
I assume these are the things the outsets clip onto if you get outsets for these. Um, the lens on this is a bit like with the Polish MP5. It's semi-flexible, um, but not really flexible. So it's, it seems to be made out of a fairly strong material, but there is, I think, you can get a polycarbonate outset for these, which are meant to obviously stop shrapnel or whatever breaking through them. But yeah, overall, um, I'm quite impressed with this. It's basically a GSR done right, so my very next video I make will be this directly versus the GSR to look at all the little bits on them to see how they, you know, vary. So uh, I'll just get the bag now in case you're interested in the bag this comes with, you know, just because. Okay, so this is your uh, Avon M50 bag. I'll just check in case there's anything else in it of interest. But I don't think so. I think this bottom bit is just reinforced to... Um, you know, keep, make the bag keep its shape a bit better. Right, there is something in here, but I think, like I was saying, that. Or is this an outsert? Oh, I might have found an outsert. Oh, it is the outsert. Okay, that's good. So here's your, like, safety goggle polycarbonate outsert. So in theory, this should just go on like this somehow. There we go. That's on there now. And I should still be able to use the binoculars. Let me just double check that. All right, let's have a look. Do the binoculars still work? Yeah, the binoculars still work. So the binoculars work even with the outsert on. So you might as well just keep that on. Doesn't seem to cause any problems. Okay, so you've got a pouch there for whatever. Um, I don't think there's anything in this pouch at the moment. There's like a tough plastic bit, but I think it's just designed to keep the shape of the bag in its regular shape, as far as I can tell. Unless I can get it out, but as far as I can tell, that's just, um, or it might be like a molly clip. I think that's like a molly clip in there. So you've got that pouch there. You've got the bottom pouch I've closed up that had the outset in it. And then you've got your main section of the bag in here which is actually pretty big. Um, there's obviously the mask goes in, then you fold this bit back down, and then you put the thing up. So I'll just put the mask in to show you, and that will conclude this video. So yeah, the mask's in there, the top of the bag's closed up, and then obviously this all just folds down. So I'm not sure if it's one of those weird leg satchels or not, but um, obviously size-wise this is a lot smaller than the um, you could even have this like a rucksack, I guess. Maybe. I have a feeling that's one of those weird leg bags, which I never personally want a mask in a bag like that. I prefer the old belt style ones. But there you go, there's your um, M50 in its bag. But yeah, this um, is much better than the uh, GSR, um, the Scott GSR that Britain used, unsurprisingly. Uh, as I said, the very next video is going to be a direct comparison where I can try and prove that to you because I know people are going to be like, no, you're just an Avon fanboy, the GSR is amazing. So I'll put them side by side, I'll weigh bits of them, um, you know, we'll look at like the strength of some of the bits where bits are attached together. Um, the only thing I will say about this that doesn't seem great, and again, I've not researched it too much, is when you take those filters off, it doesn't seem to automatically seal the thing like I thought it was meant to. Um, the system is there obviously because there's that rubber valve that you can with your finger close and open um, and obviously it's designed when the filters pushed on there that will keep the valve open but it doesn't seem to have an automatic closing system for it so that is something that's better on the GSR but that being said the GSR also horribly restricts the airflow with that filter design because at least this Avon one has a better system for allowing more air to flow through the filter um, I'll also point out that you'll probably see in a video tomorrow the massive difference in size and weight between the filters despite the fact I think they're meant to last a similar amount of time in a CBRN environment so there's always that um, but so far everything seems just better on the Avon M50 much better build quality, much better design um, and it's really no wonder that supposedly the British Army is probably going to now use this mask whether or not, you know, this would actually be practical enough to replace an FM12, I don't know, because as I said before, I kind of like those old school masks where everything is simple and just well made. But the Avon M50 is certainly good, um, and as I said, tomorrow we will have a good comparison video. I'll film it tomorrow, and then when it goes live, you'll have your really good, um, hopefully, comparison video that holds no bar, you know, between the two masks, the carry bags and everything. So there you go.